interest rates are making a major breakout right now. For the past 10 years, we've heard investors talking about interest rates non-stop because that's what the market has been about. It's been about interest rates and it's been about QE. So what does this breakout actually mean for stocks? Is it significant enough to actually be moving stocks? And the answer is yes. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. How is this going to impact the stock market right now if this breakout actually holds and even continues to rally? So sit back and listen very carefully because we are going to be covering a lot of things today. There's going to be a lot of new concepts in this video. And by the way, if you haven't checked out our brand new website that just went live at gameoftrades.net, don't hesitate to go ahead and do so. We're preparing a lot of premium content for the site right now. Every major concept and strategy that we use in investing and trading will be on the site explained thoroughly. And for the members of the trading room, we encourage you to ask for chart analysis on certain stocks and our opinions on your trade ideas. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So this is the interest rate chart on the weekly chart. You can see interest rates fell very hard during the health crisis right here. They bottomed right there on that candlestick tail. And we've so far been in a consolidation zone. I'm going to put a support level right here. This has been the consolidation zone with a brief false breakout right here. Now we're breaking out again. And if this breakout holds, it has massive implications for the stock market. And so to understand exactly how this is going to impact stocks, we're going to go step by step explaining in the most comprehensive terms the relationships between interest rates, stocks and bonds. If you understand these concepts, you're going to be able to go a lot further in your analysis. So part number one, let's discuss the relationship between interest rates and bonds. We're going to clear the chart and I'm going to zoom out. And so we can add a chart of TLT on here. This is the bond price ETF, the treasury bond price ETF. So these are the high quality types of bonds. And that's the orange line you see right here. And you'll quickly figure out this is interest rates. This is bonds. They have a perfect inverse relationship. When interest rates go down, bonds go up. And there are very specific reasons for that. Fundamentally, I'm going to leave an article below that you can check out if you're interested in seeing why this is the case. But for now, all you need to understand is that the lower the interest rates go, the higher the bonds go. And so this breakout very recently on interest rates has impacted bonds. So we're going to put up a chart of TLT so that we can see more clearly. So this is the daily chart of TLT and you'll see right here. This was a major line of support on TLT. Interest rates broke out and the bond prices collapsed back under this level. So we're right now in this zone here. We'll call it no man's land between this $148 level and this zone here with almost no support. So within the next couple of weeks, we'll see how this holds, how this develops. But this really could put the bond market into a heavy downtrend in the next few weeks. So what does that mean for the stock market? By the way, this is usually the point in the video where if you haven't already hit the like button, it really helps us out tremendously. It just takes a couple of seconds. It's completely free and it really helps our videos get pushed to a wider audience. So thank you very much for doing that. Now, part number two, and hold on because things are about to get a lot more interesting. We're going to talk about the long term relationship between interest rates, stocks and bonds. So as we saw on the interest rate chart, the 30 year yield interest rates have been in a downtrend for the last 40 years. This chart doesn't go back to 1982, but interest rates peaked at around 15% in 1982. So this is 9% this chart should go much, much higher up. And for those of you who don't know what this is called, it's called monetary easing. And it's to stimulate the economy. 
the lower you have interest rates, the more people are going to be able to borrow money. And so this long-term trend in interest rates heading to the zero level is what has been pushing stocks higher for decades and it's what has been pushing bonds higher for decades. Again, we're not gonna get into the detail, fundamental reasons for this, but just to show you, I'm gonna put up a chart of the S&P 500 on this. And indeed, stocks have been going up nonstop since 1982. And just a quick history lesson, between around 1960 and 1982, stocks went absolutely nowhere. And that's because instead of seeing interest rates go down for that period of time, they had to raise interest rates, putting downwards pressure on stocks. So you can say that this massive bull market that we've seen since 1982 has been a result of the market environment of low interest rates. So using this logic, surely a rise in interest rate, the breakout that we just saw recently, should be putting pressure on stocks. So is it the end of the world just because the interest rates broke out? And the answer is no, and actually quite the opposite. And this is where things get really interesting. And now we're gonna talk about the short-term relationship between stocks and bonds. So we're gonna go back to a classic chart of the S&P 500. So this is the S&P 500, and why are we talking about all these interest rates, the bonds, what does it have to do with what's gonna happen over the next couple of weeks? I mean, we talked about the long-term relationship between interest rates and stocks, but the short-term relationship is determined by something completely different. And it's all about asset allocation. Stocks and bonds are the two main asset classes that big financial institutions and hedge funds will own, these two. So when these financial institutions have to figure out whether they buy more stocks or whether they buy more bonds, that puts these two in a competitive environment. So when the demand for stocks goes up, well, the demand for bonds goes down. And when the demand for stocks goes down for bonds tends to go up and vice versa. So you can say that stocks and bonds have an inverse relationship in the short term. So it does get a little bit complicated because we just saw that both stocks and bonds have been going up for 40 years, right? So they have a long-term correlation, but a short-term inverse relationship. So this is all the theory. Now let's put it into actual charts because that's what matters, the results. Does this actually hold up to be true? So the orange line is TLT, the bond prices, and the chart is the S&P 500. So let's see what happened in 2008. All right, stocks went down for this entire period, 2007 to 2008. And what happened to bonds? Well, they went up for that entire period. That is pure asset allocation and supply and demand. Now what happened at the bottom of 2008, right here in 2009, the stock market bottomed and rallied and bond prices topped and went down. And I'm not gonna go through the entire chart, but you can see the relationship there is, right? When bonds go down, stocks go up. Now this is not a perfect relationship by any means. There will be moments where they will rise together and fall together. Look at 2014, bonds were rising, stocks were rising. So this is not a perfect relationship, but it is one more thing to consider when analyzing the fundamentals of the stock market. By the way, if you enjoy this type of video with more fundamental analysis, more educational type of content, make sure to let us know in the comment section below and also by, again, clicking the like button. It really doesn't take much time, but it helps us out massively. So now what's the conclusion from all this? So some of you have probably already figured out what the answer is or what the conclusion is. If this short-term relationship holds up to be true and that interest rates hold this breakout and continue to rise, that will cause 
bonds to go down back to these support levels and that will put massive upwards pressure on stocks. Now the stock market is not safe by any means. That's something we say in every, we are not considering the stock market as a safe investment for the long term. But short term, we're trading what we're seeing, we're remaining flexible, and right now, we're seeing more upside on stocks. So that's about all we wanted to cover in this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In the meantime, good luck on your trading, and see you next time.